Okay. My name's Timon, and this is Slider Drift. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if you've been here before, you know what's going on, and welcome back. In this video, I am going to do a few things. I am going to install pressurized fresh water, a hot water system, an outdoor shower, and also a solar dump load. So I will have an automatic relay that will click on based on the state of charge of my battery. So when I've got too much solar during the day, hopefully that can turn on my hot water system. I will also be installing a pressurized salt water system, which will go up to the bow for like the anchor wash down and will go to the stern for like a fish cleaning station. I've been on anchor now for maybe a couple of months. Up until then, I was at the dock for two winters. I have been having cold showers for two winters. I have been showering underneath a hose for two winters. Since leaving there, I have been showering underneath like a camping shower. One of these things, it's absolutely sh house. I don't recommend it. The water just dribbles down. It, it's, it, it's horrible. Now, if you hear the words come out of your mouth, I miss showering underneath the hose, and that doesn't seriously make you reevaluate your life choices. I don't know what's going on. It is going to be absolutely amazing to A, have running fresh water on the boat, B, have a shower on the boat, and C, have that shower be warm. In the 1960s, the very first hot water systems, pressurized hot water systems were invented, and just a mere 160 years later, Frankie Knuckles, welcome to the 21st century. No, wait. Is it the 21st or the 22nd? My plan is this outdoor shower. I think it's actually a marine one. Um, I got the smallest profile that I could get. Install this here because this, not even attached to anything. <laughs> no wonder it didn't work. This here, that way I can plug up this hole without having to fiberglass it in. And also with the three meter hose, I can get up and wash the solar panels off if I need to, and also wash this whole cockpit down or take the hose extension into the tender and wash the tender out if there's anything that needs to be washed down in there. This is going to be the main shower. Up until now, I and Kate have been using what we call the dribble shower, which is the camping shower. It is brutal during winter, not because it's cold, but because it comes out so slowly. We've also experimented with having the deluxe shower, which is a jerry can like this, hoisted up on the main halyard and we siphon out the water. It just comes out so much quicker. So it uses about, I'd say about eight to nine liters of water. Install this. I also have this weird little access hatch here, but I would also like to put a hose adapter through here so that I can actually get the hose click it into there and then I've got pressurized water which I can run anywhere on the boat. No template. The most simple thing ever to make a product so much easier and they don't do it. So using marine grade cardboard I fashioned a template. Okay this thing also didn't come with any gasket so I've just doubled up this gasket material that I've got here made a crude one. Wherever possible with my plumbing, I was using John Guest fittings. John Guest fittings, I've used them before in the house truck build. They're so easy to use, they just click together and they have stood the test of time. And so I'm really happy with them and I'll be happy to use them again. Okay. So next up on the list is the salt water wash down and fish cleaning station. This is the old pump from the wash down, but originally it was, it had a switch to turn it on underneath the V berth. I don't know, it was really, it was really weird. So, and it was also using one of the seacocks that I wanted for the sink in the, uh, um, in the head. So 
I just disconnected that and now it's time to reconnect it again because the deck wash is going to be handy but even more so the few fish that Kate and I caught when we were up north being able to just constantly wash that down with salt water initially and then do your final wash off with fresh water would, would be really useful okay salt water in through the pump and it comes out tees off here runs up into the cockpit to my fish cleaning station and it also goes up one pump for the two things <sighs> 24 25 knots at the moment and no, it's been up to 28 camera never does it justice but definitely feels like i'm sailing a little bit Showtime's over, let's get back to work. Here's where things get a little messy. From here, I need to get from here up into the anchor locker up there. I do not really want to be drilling through these structural support needs if I can. So to avoid that, I'm going to go from here. Underneath here, you can't quite see it, but I can get into this storage area here. And from there, I should be able to get through this storage area and then underneath the V-berth where it should be relatively easy for me to continue forward into the anchor locker and up to where the, the windlass is and the washdown will be. It's been as I see fit. I didn't travel around a year. I would take all of the pressure off of my shoulder. Okay, it's time for some wiring. I want to put the water heater all the way back in there at that very back spot it does have a switch on it for the 240 but what i'm going to do is just leave that switch on i've got an extension cord and i'll run the extension cord up to probably here and then this is going to be a 240 outlet get an electrician to install that there then that way i can turn it on and off quite easily right here yes i'm also going to wire it into the 12 volt and i think it just prioritizes the 240 if the 240 is on it obviously uses that and, and automatically switches over i've also got another deck wash switch that i'll put out in the cockpit time to do some electrical i probably like electrical more than most anything else on the boat but it also means running cables and running cables is a pain in my dick now i just need to connect that to the pump gotta love something that comes with a cutout template Using the awesome cutout template, I marked up where I needed to cut, drilled some holes for the corners, and cut out the section that I needed. I then wired up the switch and just installed it into its little spot. Okay, this has got its built-in fuse and it's the right size, which is very convenient. Good morning. There was just too much wind yesterday to test the uh, the fish station out. And also, I did not get my hot water installed last night. I was really hoping for one hot shower, but one more night of cold won't kill me. Let's see this fish station, make sure it, uh, it all works properly. So it all looks pretty good. I can obviously just take this off, hose it down more. That's angled pretty good. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Can also change the amount of output that's on there. And when I'm done with this, I just take it off. And on. So yeah, I think that's a win. Yep. But here's the one-way pressure relief valve. That just screws onto here. And then cold in there, hot obviously comes out here to the hot water attachment for the, at the mixer in the cockpit. And then as far as the wiring is concerned, both of these negatives can be joined together and connected to the negative of the battery. And this has got a 50 amp fuse. That'll be a lot closer to the battery. And this is my switch. 
So this is a low voltage switch wire. So I'll have to run that to the actual switch panel. And this, yeah, it's temporary. I'm gonna redo it, I'll redo it sometime. So now I've got it hooked up to here, so I can just turn that off. 945 watts. That was, uh, that was really nice. It doesn't stop the cold wind though in between the uh, times when you've actually got the shower going. So yeah, but it is way better than cold. Okay, I'm gonna give you a rundown now of what the final products will look like and how I've activated that solar dump load. The solar dump load will turn on at a certain state of charge, but let's go outside and uh, and view the finished products first and then um, we'll come back inside. I have my classic beanie and green hoodie on. For those of you that actually think that I only wear one set of clothing, well, you'd be right. Hopefully it's uh, not too loud today. There are people everywhere. Uh, and I am one of them. Okay, over here now on the left hand side I have the salt water pump and on the right hand side I have the fresh water pump. So let's go ahead and turn both of those on. Sorry, I'm just trying to get out of the wind so you, you guys can hear me clearly. So through here, I've already showed you that goes to the fish station. I also have that hooked up to either fresh water or salt water can come out of that. Salt water, obviously, mainly for fish cleaning. For, for other stuff, I have hoses that I can run around the boat. And fresh water, likewise. If I need fresh water anywhere on the boat, it'll be coming out of there if this thing can't reach. And also, like, I have an abundance of power at the moment. I have so much power, I literally switch my solar off for like three days at a time and get down to 50%. And then just switch it on and it's back to 100 that same day. So I can actually see myself in the future after I've made the water maker, which should be sometime this year I think. I'm making a water maker, DIY version, classic Timon. If someone's struggling and needs water, I can easily just turn my water maker on, give them a little bit of water or fill up their tank and then just switch mine on until my tank is full. This fresh water tap is really good. It's always set at the temperature that I like. So now I literally just press it on and hot water, like the right temperature comes out. So that's great, I don't have to mess around with turning hot and cold all the time. It's always just constantly exactly how I like it, which is good. Hose broke really quickly. That was a cheap piece of shit. And the same with this little door thing. So this probably wasn't the best spot for this. I thought I would be lazy and put it here so I didn't have to fiberglass in a hole. So I just put it there and obviously coming in and out over the transom here. Um, yeah, it sort of got kicked and it's gone now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to run it like this and if it really becomes a pain in the ass, I'll get another one or actually just do it properly like I should have done in the first place. Rip, roll, rip, roll, rip, roll, rip, roll. Obviously that works awesome too. I haven't actually used it yet. I guess in muddy conditions or wherever, you've got this little deck wash or to shoot at people that come and anchor too close. Okay, and as far as turning the hot water on with the 240 volt, you've guys seen how I've done that with underneath the stairs. And I'll show you what I've done with the Serbo GX and the solar dump load. And I'll explain how I've done that as well. Here I'm just in the normal pages part of the app. I actually have my solar turned off now. Like I said, I always have way too much power now that it's heading into summer. So if you go into menu and then settings and then relay, here you have relay one and relay two. So the best way that I've found to use it is through relay one. Relay two only works under your own coding or if you download someone else's coding. So relay one, the options you have for the relay is for an alarm relay, 
a generator start stop which is pretty self-explanatory a tank pump so it start will start and stop based on a certain level of any tank that you've got set manual which is just a switch on this actual screen that i can turn it on and off and temperature if it's hooked up to temperature sensor obviously it will turn on and turn off at a certain temperature so the easiest way is generator start stop but it needs to be inverse logic because the generator will be turning off once you get to a high state of charge and we want it to basically be turning on. Now I'm back in settings. Just above this now, there will be generator start stop. And then state is running by state of charge condition and you do that in settings. And then you go to conditions. Now what I mean by inverse logic is on the back of the Serbo GX, you need to wire it into relay one and normally closed and common. Then to use inverse logic, you just turn everything on its head. So on loss of communication, start generator, swap every start with stop and every stop with start. So on loss of communication, stop water heater so that's what basically mine is set to and when you go battery state of charge enabled you will get the conditions here and then you'll put in your certain conditions so i've just got mine set at 98 percent and 96 percent so use battery state of charge yes that is on and now here we have to swap start with stop stop when the battery state of charge is lower than 96 percent stop value during quiet hours that's if you've got quiet hours programmed i don't so don't worry about that and then the third line down here start when the battery state of charge is higher than 98 percent so get your head around it when you get into this just swap start with stop and stop with start in your own head and that's where you go okay so now i've got it set up where i can turn the water heater on manually and that just turns on the obviously the 12 volt circuit and i can also turn on the solar dump load and that means the solar dump load is now on and that will only switch the water heater on when the conditions are met. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Okay, so when my battery gets to 98%, the water heater will switch on like so, and then it'll stay on until it goes below 96% and then it'll again switch off. And that's that for another video. A special thanks to my Patreons. You guys are absolute legends. Thank you so much. Yeah, I can't describe what a luxury it is to have warm showers after two years of not having warm showers. Yeah, it is absolutely amazing. You guys probably haven't seen pressurized water or showers on many sailboats before. and But yeah, I don't know. I feel like that this is probably going to catch on and maybe even become industry standard one day. Okay, bye.